All right, I think we are now live. Great. Um, and I think it's it's maybe better to do, go uh, horizontal. Horizontal. Because uh, we see we see more horizontal than vertical. Um, all right, hey guys. So let's see, and you can sort of read some of the comments there. Um, all right, we're gonna. Let's see. So here we are. Um, we're just uh, leaving Tesla headquarters, and uh, we just dropped a random pen at Stanford or whatever. Uh, we can clear that though, and I don't know. We can pick it. I'll just uh, whatever. Um, AI end to end. Um, let's see how it does. So let's go. Well, let's see. Um, okay, so here we're kind of, let's see, added to kind of random spot. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be pretty wobbly. So. <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's really smooth sailing in the car itself. Um, and here we're encountering some construction. And the car is just... Uh, driving around the construction. So it, it, it has never seen this construction before. Uh, well, it is near the headquarters, but this construction is relatively new. Um, and let's learn exactly the right lane. But now it's coming over to the right lane. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> you can see the destination. Hopefully, nobody meets us there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Is this uh, is this working? <laughs> is this live stream working? Hello. <laughs> can check on my phone. I mean, obviously it's a little boring <laughs> because we're at a red light. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of traffic uh, this time. So I don't want to bore people to death here, but um, we're just uh, sitting at a red light in Palo Alto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it, like these the, the videos like this are maybe more interesting if um, they're edited and uh, sped up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I'll try to answer comments if I see comments. Man, this is a long red. Well, the car is patiently waiting for the car light to change. And, uh, yeah. Made a good left. It's kind of hard to tell, maybe from the live stream, but the car is driving very smoothly. Uh, I think I'll re we'll rely on others to uh, take this video, edit out the boring bits, and speed it up. <laughs>
entirely AI and cameras, just like our brain works, which is neural nets and eyes. Yep, I just slow down for a speed bump, which is cool. I just slow down for another speed bump. And we did not program in, there's no, pro, there's no line of code that says slow down for speed bumps. So it is doing this based entirely on video training. Yeah, and there was a, we just saw, <laughs> uh, there was a, a bicyclist. Uh, again, there is no line of code that says uh, give clearance to bicyclists. It is just doing what people do. It it, does, it 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 can read science without ever being taught to read. Once again, there is no line of code that says stop at a stop a sign or wait for another car. Yeah, uh, who came first or whatever. Or well, who came, there's not like wait X number of seconds, nothing like that, nothing. Is that, this is all nets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but nets. When we get to our destination, we'll change the pin as like drop it somewhere else random. Maybe we'll run into Zuckerberg and uh, we can like, challenge him to a fight. That'd be fun. Spice it up. <laughs> <laughs> He's not traveling <laughs> somewhere to his backyard. So here we are at a roundabout. So roundabouts were obviously pretty complicated. It's waited it, for those two cars. Yep, it just waited for those two cars to go and then did the turn. Um, again, I've been, I've been somewhat repetitive about this, but we have never programmed in the concept of a roundabout. We just showed a, a, a whole bunch of videos of roundabouts. <laughs> so a so lot- a big fleet helps. Yeah, I, I mean, for you, you definitely need a, a lot of training data to a lot of video training data in order to make this work. Uh, so it's, and you need a, yeah, really um, billions of dollars of training hardware um, and you need to know how to run the neural net training hardware. So it's not like easy, um, but the, the, the mind blowing thing is that there are no, there, there's, there's no heuristics, there's no like uh, lines of code. Like there's a, there's a guy on a scooter, it's never, it doesn't know what a scooter is. It doesn't know what paddles are. It's literally just been given a lot of video. So. And it's doing all of this on Hardware 3 uh, with about 100 watts of inference compute. So it's not like, obviously, we're not, it's not some like massive data center. And if, if we were offline, there would be no difference. It, the, this is locally all the inference that's happening is local it, it does not need an internet connection and and obviously that's necessary because if you you know lost your cellular internet connection the car, the car needs to drive safely um, but we could be somewhere that where there is no internet connection um, and and it, it it's never seen the roads before it doesn't matter runs at 36 fps Oh yeah, runs, we're running at the full frame rate. So it's taking eight cameras uh, at 36 frames per second. Um, uh, yeah. The, the, the pure AI version runs better than, it runs faster than the, the version that is a mixture of normal software and AI. Um, in fact, it, it would run it faster than 36, uh, frames per second, um, except the cameras are currently only capable of 36 FPS. Um, our current, you know, back of the envelope uh, frame number is, we, we think it could probably run at 50 uh, frames a second. Um, 
and uh, yeah, so but, but the, the re reality of the roads are basically designed around 24 frames a second. Um, basically, it's, it's similar to I, I just I just we got to the end, got to our destination, so I'll just uh, you know pick a new destination here. Yeah, there's like some sort of random place here. Yeah, uh, yeah wherever somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, hello, assassins. If you want to get me, now is your chance. <laughs> you just need to be in Palo Alto. <laughs> <laughs> like this, the assassin count is low in Palo Alto. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just right. We're, uh, I should have just dropped a sort of random pin. We don't know where we're going really. Um, <laughs> just somewhere to follow up so. um, but it's just also worth noting and sure you may want to actually sort of provide some com some commentary as well um, but we, we've got a uh, uh, test drive you know uh, yeah, FST 12 test drivers around the world so we've got we've got people in I think like New Zealand and like Thailand and yeah. Norway Japan Japan yeah. Every, everywhere because yeah. you, know, you should generalize the, the concept of driving is general. You don't need to like just do it in the U.S. You could do it everywhere simultaneously. Right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Just like a human um, can go travel to a country they've never been to before and rent a car and drive around. It'd be you know not, maybe not quite as good, as good as someone local, but you can still rent a car in, in you know foreign country and drive around. And, <laughs> and we just have like some students over there. That uh, one of them stumbled briefly into the road, and the car uh, drove around them. <laughs> a lovely day in California, um, the beautiful Stanford campus. <laughs> Playing a little uh, Four Seasons. Change the Pretty soon we'd add also like you know instructions following so you could like say uh, lane change to the leftmost lane or yeah. uh, pull over here or something like that and the car should even respect those kinds of commands. Yeah, uh, exactly. So yeah, so we're here we are at a roundabout. Uh, the car is, is you know I've, I've never I've never been to this roundabout before and the car is not specifically trained on this roundabout. And then once it's our turn, so, it just proceeds. Yeah, conference. exactly. So it, it 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 waited, correct for the correct amount of time, drove smoothly about, around the roundabout. Uh, again, I, I will be somewhat repetitive, but there yeah, there is no line of code that says what a this is a roundabout. There is not nothing that says wait, you know, x number of seconds, which is what we have in the um, explicit control stack. Uh, that's the sort of uh, version 11. Uh, there's over 300,000 lines of C++ in the explicit controls control stack of version 11, um, and there's basically none of that in version 12. Yeah, and just because there's no lines of code doesn't mean that it's not controllable. It's still like quite controllable on what you want by just adding data. Now you have to program with data instead of programming with code. Yeah, <laughs> data curation. Yeah. Uh, and then whenever we find that there's something, say if the card doesn't perform perfectly, we give it more examples of what it should do in that situation, and um, you know, it up updates the the weights, and uh, then it works. Yeah, and also we have labelers cleaning and making sure that all the data that goes in is like the good driving data, not like the bad drivers from you know the world. There are bad drivers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very important. The quality of the data is, is very important. So, um, l large amounts of mediocre data do not make improve driving. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite the opposite, actually. Yeah, it makes it worse. So, um, that's why the d d data curation is actually quite difficult. And I should say that there is quite a bit of software around what data you know, so selecting what data to train the system yeah, with. Yeah. 
So the software that runs in the car is minimal, but the software in the back end to train is like much larger and yeah. much more sophisticated. Yeah, exactly. So we do we do use like normal software for you know C plus plus basically for uh, Python for um, deciding what data to select from the fleet, yep. um, and then figuring out well what what is the high quality data versus uh, the pretty good data. And once we have a model, we also ship those models in shadow mode to the cars, and then every time it disagrees with what the user did, yeah, exactly. then you can like, get the data back, and then, you know, kind of, that is more valuable than just collecting, you know, random data. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so it's, we, we feel good about actually having a, um, a, a very rapid virtuous cycle uh, where when there is an intervention in the fleet, um, that with that intervention automatically being uploaded uh, to the, to training, um, being integrated with training, and then updating really just the the weights. Uh, so the the it's it's not the it's not the binary that's that's changing. It's the weights. Well, it's not the execution binary. It's the just really for the weights. So I have not intervened uh, once, and the drive has been butter smooth. You know, again, being being somewhat repetitive, uh, we're repetitive about being repetitive, in fact. Um, but we have not programmed in the concept of traffic lights. So there's not like oh. The, this is a red light, this is a green light, and this is the traffic light position. We, we, we have that in the, the normal stack, but we do not have that in V12. This is just video, video training. Like I said, nothing but uh, neural nets. Um, and yet it, it knows which light applies to it. Um, and it stops at a red light, accelerates at a green light. Um, now, one of the sort of maybe slightly funny challenges we've had is that um, since the car is being trained on what humans do, uh, humans almost never stop fully at a stop stop street. So when they get to a stop sign, humans actually almost never go to zero miles an hour. They they may think they did, but usually they they're doing at least um, a few miles an hour uh, at a stop coming up to a stop street. Um, Sometimes, you know, people go faster than that, but uh, the uh, regulators are somewhat, in, they're really quite insistent that we we go to uh, a complete, come to a complete stop at um, at stop signs. <laughs> and um, when we looked at the data, uh, only 5% of the time do humans actually stop fully. Even, even lower than that, oh, like 0.5%. Like so, 0.5%? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so it's basically people almost never fully stop at stop signs so we had to um even if, even if you look at those data it's like a lot of them come to a stop and on they get on their phone or something you know it's yeah, like, yeah it's not just regular people doing the stops yeah and they're like they might like semi stop and then move a little bit and that kind of thing so so, so we had to like uh pull the fleet for rare examples that <laughs> less than one percent of the time when people actually come to a full stop and artificially train the system to stop at stop signs um, at the insistence of the regulators. So. Like I said, this is it's a little slow because uh, we're driving around in basically rush hour. Mm, oh, 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 intervention! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's our first intervention.
because the car should be going straight. Yeah, so this model has small regression in the traffic lights. We have okay. Or sample the traffic lights. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, uh, that's why we've not released it to the public yet. Um, so an, an intervention at this traffic light. Uh, that, that's the first intervention in the whole drive. Okay. Yeah, so it just it just did a merge, traffic merge, super smooth. So for that intervention that we just had, um, the solution is essentially um, to feed the network a bunch more video of traffic lights. Um, so that was a that was a controlled left inner a, a control, controlled uh, left turn um, where there was green light for the left turn, but not a green light to go straight. Um, and so we'll feed it a bunch of video of uh, control left turns, and uh, then it'll work. shadow mode release where we're going to run this network in the background and then check when for example in this case we would have wanted to go but then the driver would not have gone so we can just like check that okay we like and then we can get the data back into the laborers and the laborers say who was correct yeah yeah and that that helps you know you know that like we should not have gone so you don't have to even get the intervention you can just like passively observe yes. what we want to do and this is what happened in reality So here we have another controlled left uh, traffic intersection, although it was given both greens, so it's kind of an easy one. This, the smoothness of the control, uh, the, the car, the, just how smoothly the, the car is behaving is it's hard to convey, I think, on camera, but it's, it's just super smooth. Yeah, yeah, you have to feel it, really. So that's making a left turn. So it's it's gotten itself into the left turn lane. Uh, again, we've never programmed in the notion of a turn lane or anything like that. Or even a lane. Oh, we, we, yeah, we, we don't even know what. A, we've never. There's there's no line that says. Uh, think that it has. There's no line of code about traffic lanes, at all. Internal to its mind, it might know all these concepts and you know how we think about it, the hints and things like those. But we have just not explicitly asked for it. Yeah. Well, just like humans. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know. All right. We've arrived at this random pin. It might try to pull over. Let's see if it does. Sometimes it does blow over. Yeah, so it, it kind of so this is yeah, so this is pretty cool. So the car just just pulled over to the side of the road, and um, and the passenger and, should get off and yeah, and, and parked. So it would it it knows at the end of its destination based on the video that's received that at the end of the, at the end of the destination you pull over to the side and park. Yeah, and it so, also gets the exact pin location in addition to the navigation route. So you know, it just pin is close is a good spot spot here it puts over here but in park, big parking lots where there might not be any map yeah you should just go as close to the pin as possible right yeah. exactly yeah, even without any, any route or anything like that yeah and in fact uh, 
in, in sort of robotaxi world, it would actually just, um, you know, probably perhaps know what you look like and say, and just literally look for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you have a picture or something, you can just yeah, look for exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you're signed up and it's like, you know, just say, you don't have to, but if you, if you wanted the car to literally find you, yeah. sit, get, you just have to send it a picture of you and it will, it will look for you and, 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 and wait for you. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then you can also say, drop me off at the Starbucks or something. And yeah. It should drop you off at the building's entrance as yes. close to Starbucks as possible, as opposed to somewhere random, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, well, I guess, let's see, we'll, I don't know, probably head back to HQ. Or it has a enduring HQ. Do you want to do the fight or? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, where, where does he live? So um, it's know, somewhere around Google here. Yeah. yeah, should we just Google it? Yeah, you can Google it. Google it. <laughs> I mean, you know, we can knock on the door and whatever. Of whatever Google says. Please say hi, I guess. Yeah, we'll say, we'll say hi. We'll be friendly. Um, well, well, it's just a polite inquiry as to whether you would like to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah, the old, you know, if it's a, way. Not, yeah, it's yeah. A, you know, if not inconvenient. Um, perhaps you would like to um, fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is we have no. This is literally we just googled it. We don't know if this is where he actually lives or not. But we'll yeah, just go there. Roughly, roughly. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's like, yeah, okay. Right, so let's go, guys. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So now we're <laughs> we're at least going to where Google says, uh, you know, Zuckerberg lives. Um, you know, I don't think this is really, you know, it can't be really considered doxing if we just Googled it. Uh, so, um, so, so we'll see if it it's the drive correctly to where Google thinks you live. Doing a pretty good job of driving through the Palo Alto so for lovely. Even the speed is just everything is automatic. Right. Oh, is it going to stop? Yeah. Okay, good. Stopped at the red line. Yeah, it was a late hello, so it's just like... Yeah. yeah. Pretty much what a person would do. Cyclists over there. And Palo, Alto, Palo Alto really is a, a lovely town. It's, it's, it feels like um, a Truman Show. It's best for families. Yeah. It's like everything's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it to let so I can see the comments. Um, yeah, there's no lane drifting. It's super smooth in the lane. And it doesn't confuse a bike lane with a real lane or anything like that. Yeah, this is, the ride is super comfortable. I'll, as I see messages popping up, I'll try to answer them. Oh, there's a lot of messages, actually. <laughs> Which way is the... It's like 600. <laughs> so now it's gone into the... So here we are, headed 
to like Edgewood Drive. I don't even know if this is actually where he lives or not. Yeah, probably not, because it's like I would expect it to be like a lot of security and stuff. Uh, anyway, well, this is. Um, we are at the spot that's roughly where. But I don't think. It, this doesn't seem probably where it is, because I have probably be security okay. and stuff, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's sort of a little nice driving around Palo Alto. Can I head back to the office? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, Zuckerberg did say, like, name the date in bold letters or whatever on, um, you know, whatever platform he's on. And so I'm like, hey, right about right now. So just, you know, it's, it's, does now work. <laughs> Alright, well, we can invite him, so we are heading back to Tesla headquarters. Our ship is waiting for the pedestrians or something. Maybe it's like, perhaps overly cautious about yeah. the pedestrians. Uh, nice couple passing by, we'll, we won't film them, because they <laughs> <laughs> might be a little weird. They won't be approving it. <laughs> yeah, just walk past, so... Yeah, of course, I... The car is, is, is very, very polite with pedestrians. So it's stopped to wait the, for the couple to pass by and uh, now it's continuing to drive. So here we are in Palo Alto driving on to Pure AI. Back to Tesla Global Engineering Headquarters at Palo Alto. to low visibility conditions is one of the questions. Yeah, like at or, night and stuff, I suppose. Or rain and snow. Yeah, so I think it works as we would expect it to. It like slows down rain and then drives at lower speed. And for October intersections, it kind of like crawls forward and then checks you know, if the vehicle's coming. Uh, so that's one of the areas that we're trying to you know, improve even more than uh, just doing it right now. Yeah, I and mean, one of the reasons we, we, we definitely we, we need training from all around the world is that the, the, the weather in California is amazing. And it, it's a, you know, as the song yeah. goes, like basically never rains in California. It's like sunny and nice almost all the time. Um, the drivers are pretty nice too. Huh? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the drivers here are, very, are quite blind. So. We need some aggressive drivers and also pedestrians. Or yeah. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Like we we, we need uh, you know situations where like there's a parade or a crowded situation or whatever you know yeah. a lot of pedestrians for whatever reason. Yeah. We want to be you know safe but also confident and be confident yeah. that in fact we don't want to be too skittish and like hit the brakes all the time. Yeah, if it's like unnecessary, you know. Yeah, but it, like like so, um, in, like it's uh, winter basically in New Zealand and so we have like the yeah, snowy, snow day, snowy exactly. con conditions there that we can train in. It's a dry uh, bicyclist, uh, it's a little tight, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's 
looking for pedestrians. Yeah, it's, it's, it is very conservative with bicyclists and pedestrians, so generally. So. They had to turn away almost to like for us to continue. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so this, this is a tricky one. So this is turning left onto Middlefield in Palo Alto with where visibility is not great. So, cars so it's like, both sides. yeah, cars coming from both sides at pretty high speeds. But, uh, did it. Yeah, no problem. Great. So an un unprotected left onto a high speed road, fairly high speed road. No problem. <laughs> yeah, the, so V12 will be, I would say, actually smart summit, ASS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Internally, we also call it like revenge summon almost because you want like someone to be like so much. Like the first summon was okay, but you know, the summon is gonna be like. So good that like I call it actually smart zone. Actually smart zone. <laughs> ASS. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you, don't you want some ASS? <laughs> of course you do. Speed up is quite nice too. Yeah, exactly. Like the. Very, very intuitive, smooth um, speed up and acceleration in turns. Yeah, even the set speed is just like no, set to some max value. Like yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> currently set to eighty five, but it's the it's it's ignoring the set speed. It's it's driving at what would be intuitively the right speed for people to drive at. Yeah, you need a lane change to get into the you know, yep. faster lane. Exactly. So. There's two lanes here, uh, there's a lot more cars in that lane, fewer cars in this lane, and it's going straight, so it picked the lane with the fewest cars. Exactly, it's not no explicit distance that's programmed in for how close you should be behind a car. It's again just a video training. Yeah, it's intuitive, you know, like yeah, just intuitively. these speeds and this right. is kind of the right following speed. Like what would humans generally do? Yeah. Uh, and it picks like a reasonable follow distance and does that. Yeah, the nice thing is, you know, for bad weather conditions, for example, it will like, automatically increase the speed. Yep. Um, and if or you decrease see, the speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah, yeah. increase the distance. I mean, yeah, distance, distance, yeah. This traffic light takes a while. Oh, yeah, this is the, yeah, El Camino and uh, Page Mill. A classic uh, Silicon Valley intersection. I've seen this intersection for 30 years, basically. These <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are um, headquarters is the HP. It used to be the HP yeah, headquarters, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The Tesla Global Engineering Headquarters in Palo Alto uh, are the former uh, uh, Hewlett-Packard headquarters. Yeah. 
So literally Silicon Valley like started here. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're it's an honor to be for our, our global engineering headquarters to be the you know kind of where the birthplace of Silicon Valley was. So as you can see, lovely place. So, uh, we'll, we'll actually we'll, we'll we'll see how it does in the parking lot. So, because parking lots are complicated, especially the Tesla parking lot, which is jam packed. Um, so probably pretty full even on a Friday uh, night, a Friday evening. Yeah, it's seven o'clock on a Friday. Yeah, this is a fairly tricky flight. So you got you got two. Uh, you know, con controlled lefts and and two st straight, basically two two turn lanes and two straight lanes. <laughs> and it's sort of like merge after this turn, which is also interesting because you know it's like turn and merge. Simultaneously. Yeah, it's got to exactly. It's got to turn and merge. Uh, simultaneously, which is tricky. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yes. Real smooth merge. interesting things about sort of pure AI driving is that it actually doesn't need a map at all. So we could uh, delete the navigation system, simply give it a GPS point and say, get to this GPS point somehow. We're not going to tell you how. It's, you could say like, you see that building in the distance, go there. And it would it would do that even with no, it would just, it might make some, you know, get, get to a go down a road that's a dead end and then have to reverse out but it would basically be able to do what a human can do uh, where if you said please go to you know you know yeah, that, point that yeah point point at point at something and go say go there so that's going into the parking lot the, there is no explicit map for the parking lot parking lot so now it is just just trying to get to a GPS point <laughs> yeah, they're putting new superchargers here at the cars. Okay. So it got to the point and that's it. All right, so that was the FSD 12 beta drive. Um, super smooth, um, one intervention, which we'll fix with a bit more training data. Um, and um, otherwise, uh, I really I would say like, you know, if this was a Uber driver, pretty much apart from that one intervention, five star. Yep. So, all right, thanks everyone for tuning in.